The Batman. This is the highly, highly anticipated reboot of the Batman mythos. This one is written and directed by Matt Reeves, and it stars Robert Pattinson as the titular Batman. I've seen this movie twice now, saw it at a special uh, event uh, screening. Eh, not really screening, more of a, just a showing. I'm not that special. On Wednesday, and then I saw it this afternoon on the official day of its release, which is Friday, and this movie is excellent. Man, this movie rules. It's really, really good. Now, upon rewatch, I have problems with it. In fact, you could say I even have one or two serious problems with it. But as a whole, this is a brilliant start to a universe that I so desperately want to see more of. I have my faults with this movie. But the one thing it needed to get right that, quite frankly, other versions of Batman, at least in terms of live action, have gotten wrong, is it had to get the Batman stuff down. And man, this Batman, this dude is awesome. This is probably my favorite live action version of Batman as much as I I think the Nolan movies are probably better movies what they do with this character here is just so awesome I mean there is dude there is some of the coolest in this movie and they got like they got the essence of the character so right Uh, he doesn't kill people and he doesn't use guns Um, and there's a reason for that it's because Batman doesn't fucking kill people Five years I've been putting up with this nonsense. Well, you know, in the original, uh, you know, 1940s comic book, uh, Bob Kane had him holding a gun. Yes, that was like for 10 issues. I'm talking about the Bill Finger all the way through Frank Miller, all these all these people who have interpreted Batman. He doesn't kill people. I almost teared up when they go out of their way to make sure this is who this character is. And I mean, Pattinson, I think, is absolutely mesmerizing. In this, and I, I know there's gonna be some people who are gonna look at his Bruce Wayne and feel like it was a little bit one note, who are gonna f- miss the billionaire playboy persona that uh, Christian Bale had and Ben Affleck had. Film is subjective. I'm telling you that opinion here is almost objectively wrong because I think people need to take a deeper look into what Pattinson was really going for here because this is a Batman who's still learning how to be Batman, but it's a Bruce Wayne still learning how to be Bruce Wayne, and Pattinson's portrayal is just heartbreaking. I mean, there's there's these moments where you feel like maybe the guy's suicidal or, or something because the way that he talks to people, it, he, it's almost as if he can barely even speak. He whispers uh, seemingly a lot of the time. You feel like he's severely depressed. His eyes are just wide and they, they like just stare into people's soul. I think once again, he has established himself as one of the best actors working. And for the people out there who have you know tried to claim that this guy didn't have it, um, the chickens have come home to roost. Put some respect on his name. Robert Pattinson. He's the goddamn Batman. On a technical level, this is one of the greatest comic book movies I have ever seen. It's probably in the top three to five. I and mean, this thing looks amazing. So beautifully directed. I love the, the noirish aesthetic to this. I love the way it's directed. Gotham is just so, I mean, we've had a lot of really good Gotham cities, but it's just so desolate and dingy and grimy and the score ooh, Mwah! Michael Giacino is it Giacino or Giacchino I, got, I gotta I gotta get that right this is and boy this one's gonna make some people mad this is the definitive Batman score this is better than the Elfman theme I think it's better and I love Tom Zimmer's theme I think it's better than that this it, this movie wouldn't be what it is if not for uh, Michael Giacchino's score. It, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful, haunting, but also just brutal. <laughs> this is a movie, a comic book movie that's actually directed by a human. I like Spider Man in the MCU, and I really like No Way Home. I hate the way those movies are directed. They're directed by a computer. This is an actual movie with actual or an orchestral score that matters. A director that knew what he was doing. There is no reason why all comic book movies shouldn't look like this. I'm not saying exactly like this because Batman is inherently a much darker character, but it there's a vision to this. It feels like it's directed by an actual visionary, and that's what Matt Reeves is, and I just love the look and the technical elements of this movie. The Batmobile. Man, th- this is one of the coolest designs uh, you could possibly think of for the Batmobile. I love the sound design. And Matt Reeves said that he wanted it to feel like something in a horror movie. And the way this thing revs up, we need to see more of it. Because it this thing, it's only in one scene, really. One or two scenes. But there is a car chase in this movie that, to me, it's the peak of the movie. Because both times I saw this, I went, whoa, during that car chase. I felt like a little kid just watching it. It was amazing. Not just Pattinson, but every performance here is great. And it's such a huge ensemble cast. Paul Dano, 
kills it as the Riddler. Absolutely no surprise. It's perfect casting. Zoe Kravitz, the best version we've seen of Catwoman on screen. I, I hope we get to see more of her at some point. Colin Farrell, you get the impression Colin Farrell was just having the time of his life of playing this role. I mean, so unrecognizable as the Penguin. And again, we're going to get you know, a spinoff series with him, and I can't wait to see it. And that's one thing. Even though I have problems with this movie that I'm going to get to here in a minute, I so desperately want to see more of this universe. I want to see more of these characters and the way this thing ends, and the way it sets up uh, for the future. This is this is a universe much like the Nolan films. This is a universe I just want to see more of because I think that Matt Reeves has crafted a truly original, fun, but also bleak version of Gotham City. So many things that it gets right from a filmmaking standpoint, so many things it gets right from an acting standpoint. But there are issues with this movie. There's only a few, but I would consider them big problems. Number one, the movie is long, man. And, and I didn't feel it the first time I saw it, but uh, on, on the second viewing, yeah, you could clip off a fair amount of, of off this runtime. Not a ton. And I know I complain a lot about movies' runtimes because I think Hollywood films are terribly paced. I really do. I think nowadays, for whatever reason, films are just so bloated and poorly put together. This isn't poorly put together, but it just does run a little bit too long. And it's almost a credit to the movie because it wasn't until probably over two hours in of this nearly three-hour movie where I felt the length. I felt uh, the runtime. The other big problem I have with this movie, though, is the Riddler. Now, Paul Dano is brilliant. And the idea of we're going to take the Riddler and turn him into the Zodiac Killer, what an amazing creative decision uh, that Matt Reeves came up with there. But This is often the issue with comic book movies, and it's often the issue with murder mysteries, is that when you really break down what the killer's plan actually was, it is, oh my god, no pun intended, riddled with inconsistencies, lapses in judgment, and plot holes. The basis of what the Riddler is trying to do, and maybe over time it will get explained to me, but I've seen the movie twice. But what he's trying to do and what he does do in the movie, there's a lot of coincidences. And some of it, in my opinion, doesn't make a lot of sense. And that is often the case with these movies. That's why, like, The Dark Knight is the greatest comic book movie of all time. Maybe the greatest movie of all time. And the reason for that is because the Joker is a character that doesn't have a a fully formed plan. I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, and this, and this. He's just a character who wants to see everything come undone. He's all about chaos. So, yeah, and there's things in The Dark Knight where if you break it down, you go, okay, that didn't make a lot of sense, but you just, you assume because of who the Joker is. Well, he's just smart, and he's got it figured out, and there's no, as he says in the movie, do I really look like a guy with a plan? Which, he has plans, but he doesn't have a goal. He just wants chaos here this is a character a villain with a clear-cut goal and when you break it break it down step by step uh there's a lot there's a lot of head scratching moments and because of that the film as a whole when it ended almost felt a little bit hollow i love the tone i i love the fact that it's bleak and it's dark it's what batman should be but there are certain moments in which the movie feels like it doesn't have any personality they're they're seldom and they're far and few between But when I think back to the Nolan movies, which are also very, very dark, there's those moments of levity with Alfred or Bruce or Lucius Fox. You know, in Batman Begins, there's quite a few great ones. You know, does it come in black? You know, there's there's these little moments that allow you to breathe. This is so intense the entire way through that there are moments where it feels like the movie is just kind of lacking in that department. Now, I did not, before anybody says, I didn't want it to be Marvel, which is all quippy and fun. No, but, man, I mean, it's... For a three-hour movie, you got to give me something. I mean, shit, even Seven had the dinner scene, you know, where you could laugh a little bit. This almost has none of that. All in all, though, support this movie. Like, this is such a masterfully done film, and I am so excited for where they're going to go next because I think they can improve upon this and make something that will rival the Nolan trilogy. People are probably going to ask where this ranks as far as my favorite versions of Batman or my favorite Batman movies. I think we have the best live action version of Batman, but as a film, I don't think it's better than any of the Nolan movies, but I think generally people will put it second behind The Dark Knight. I have a very, you know, soft spot, nostalgic spot for the Nolan movies, but 
overall, please see this. I mean, it's it's so much better than so many films that we see. And while I do have problems with it and I do have flaws, I'm going to be watching this so many times over the next several years because I just love this version of Batman despite some plot inconsistencies and plot holes and, and its runtime. I do love the movie. It's an 8.5 out of 10, which is the same rating I gave No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home. But my rating for that movie has lowered a fair amount since I saw it. I still really like it, but this towers over a movie like that. So 8.5 out of 10 for the Batman. This is uh, a bit of a longer review, but it's a bit of a longer movie. And it's Batman. So, you know, you, you, Batman deserves that respect. And Matt Reeves paid this character a lot of respects. Really great work. Can't wait to see what they do from here. You can follow me on Twitter, at Castellani2014. While you're at it, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get those watch hours up, up, up. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Peace and happiness.